Alex Car Doctor back with another repair tutorial for, for you guys. Today I am working on a 2013 Chevy Cruze. I will be removing a turbocharger on this vehicle. The reason I'm removing the turbocharger, if you remember from the past video when I diagnosed the problem, it was leaking from this um, turbo cooling line at this fitting right here. Um, yeah, I probably can um take this off and put a regular hose on it but at my shop i do things the right way um so i'm not won't be doing it i will be replacing with factory parts um but if you haven't seen that video i'll put it up on the, uh, on the screen somewhere so you can check that out um remember guys i'm attempting to show you this on video so you kind of got to know something about cars um you know so the ones that is feeling a little lucky or Want to attempt it today self? Um, hey, go do it at your own risk and watch it over and over again. That always helped me. <laughs> but that being said, the ones who want to do it, let's grab our wrenches and let's roll. The tools I'll be using for this job today, I'm in kind of a hurry, so you see a lot of power tools on the table. Normally, I use a lot of hand tools just so I can relate to you guys at home but I am in a rush. This customer need their car back. Um, got a nice little socket set. I think it's a Sun Sunix. I put a description to all this stuff on the table, by the way, but I love this set. This set is great. Um, I will probably need to go grab a regular ratchet, but this is the tools I'll be using. Also, you're gonna need a good drain bucket as well. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put the car up in the air because the first thing we need to do is drain the coolant. And I'm not gonna bore you with this, it's just the car going up. Oh, by the way, the only thing that it's off of it currently, this is from the last video, I didn't put it back on, um, is just the heat shield from the turbocharger. These are E10, um, E10 hex heads, I don't know. I don't know what they're really called. I didn't look it up prior to it. But going up. Got the car all up in the air. The next thing I'm gonna do is access the radiator drain screw. It has a drain plug area. And to access, because it's, it's clearly covered up, but you can see it through these little grates. It is right there. So I'm gonna take some T20. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, and some like little push pins to remove this cover. So I'm gonna move that, remove that now. Um, now you guys at home, I know you're gonna probably be on the ground doing this. It can be done. It makes it a little bit harder. but I feel for you. And by the way, um, it's kind of getting hard for me to, my wife to shoot these videos now these days because she is nine months pregnant. Mm -hmm. So make sure you, you know, like like and subscribe to support, to support me. We appreciate it guys. <laughs> okay, she's getting ready to pop any day now. I'm surprised she's still here with me. Right. To the end, to the end. <laughs> so, next thing I'm gonna use, I like to use a flat blade screwdriver. Um, turn all that off. Okay, just kind of double check. So I take a screwdriver and shove it in here. Now I have the tool for this, but I like doing this sometimes, which I'm thinking I might have to get the tool because it's got a lot of grime and dirt on it. And I don't want to mess up the pins. No, they're coming out pretty good. Come on, Alex, you got to trust in your abilities. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's not fight with me. Oh, gotcha. Hold on. I think this is the hardest part. About the whole thing, getting <laughs> the shield off. Mm -hmm. um, then once you do that, these should just come out. Let me put these down. All 
Cool. What did you use to do all Oh, that? just a flat, just blinded myself. Just a flat blade screwdriver. So nothing special there. All right. Let's see how this comes down. So when it comes down, or when you're putting it back up there, you have to make sure you kind of slide it in the little channels. It has little sliding things right there. So you have to slide it in there, line it up, and slide it forward. Bam. And then you can put your all your rest of the stuff back in. Um, yeah, that's it. Put that there. Now I can access my transmission, not Radiator. transmission, ra <laughs> radiator <laughs> drain plug. It's right here. What I like to do, because the coolant is going to come out of here, I'm just kind of going to make a mess. Um, so what I normally like to do is grab me a piece of hose that kind of fit over there, Damn, like so. That way I can kind of redirect the coolant down. Now, some cars have a little spout, but this one don't. If you get your little spout in place, you crack open the drain, like so. And now I'm gonna let the car back down. Because while I'm working up top, this will be green. Next, I'm going to remove the radiator cap. What that does is it allows gravity to do its thing. When the radiator cap is in place, it's kind of a restriction. Um, that's why I left it on because sometimes when you release that drain plug, it'll come rushing out at you. But if the radiator cap is on, It'll kind of drizzle out a little bit. So I want it to flow out fast. So I'm going to remove the radiator cap now. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is remove my turbo um, piping. Uh, that's the intake turbo piping. And the it's a 7 millimeter or a flat blade screwdriver. Make sure I'm going the right way. So always when you start taking off your pipes, make sure there's no other little pipes that's coming out of it. So kind of check because you don't want to be just snatching on stuff because sometimes there's um, crankcase pipes that hidden underneath. And if you just snatch it out, you'll break something. So just kind of run your hand or visually check what's under it before you just start yanking on stuff position my light a little bit better if I can. Oh, man. I don't want my lighting to suck. All right. I guess that's good. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is try to remove this crankcase. I think it's a crankcase pipe. Or... I need to help on a flat blade screwdriver. So when I get this off, I'm gonna kind of show you the technique I use. Well, hopefully you can catch it on camera. So be real gentle when doing this because you can break it. So the idea behind this style clamp, you squeeze in, but over time these plastic pieces get real hard and they're no longer easy to squeeze in. But I tried to squeeze in and I took my flat blade screwdriver, which you've seen on camera, and used it as a wedge to push off. All right. Now it's time for my pliers. Um, you have like these little tubes down here. So I'm gonna try to, I think I'm gonna move it from the this side because Get it off. Switch pliers. No, these will work. Oh, let me get a better light. So you can really see. Switch 
tactics here because I don't want to break anything. Um, the only reason I didn't take this one off because from my experience, they're kind of hard to take plastic lines out of rubber. So that's why I'm tackling it this way. Switch to some curved pliers. I think that's my problem. Um, this job rating, I didn't mention it earlier. Oh, there it goes. This job rating 10, what's my normal? 10 being the hardest or what? Yeah, you can say that. Um, I'll give it maybe a five. It's not hard to remove this turbo. All right, so that's what I was trying to accomplish. completely out of my way. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is kind of look around because I haven't did one of these in a while, but I normally like to unplug all my connectors first. Just a push a little clip, just push it and pull out. Move that out the way. And I need my pliers. Now there's another little bracket push pin type um, thing down here. I'ma show you once I get it out, I can better show you how to get this little. Right. Well, you're not going to see it on camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's underneath there. Um, it's two ways to get it off. If it's your car, yeah, just pull on it and snap it off if you want to. But this is a customer car. So, like always on my car, on customer cars, I treat them all the same. I like, you know, if anybody go behind me, I want everything to look original. That's just the type of guy I am. Um... And sometimes it is hard doing stuff the right way. But do stuff the right way. You never have to be like, never have to lie or worry about anything. <laughs> Your conscience will be clear. That's what I always like to think. Brian, come make this down and tell me what you guys think. Got the piece off. Uh, fought with it a little bit, but not that bad. Um, but here's what's going on. It's sort of like a, a arrowhead. And arrowhead sticks out, so it's designed to go in real good, but not come out. So you have to push these together with some pliers. See how easy that goes in? But the problem is you can't see it. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's how I got that out. So now when I put it back in this little fitting groove right here, it just snap back in. And nothing that ever looked like it was touched um now you guys may just want to rip it out with some pliers that's not recommended but you know it, it's y'all car so do what you please all right moving along um i have another this is the charge pipe pressure side down here same seven millimeter i'm unloosing it First thing I'm gonna try to do is pull on it by hand and it came right off. Sometimes they get stuck and if they do get stuck, what I normally do is take a flat, I'm saying flat blade. Where's my flat blade? Okay, right. Right. What I normally do, you have to be very gentle doing this. Um, I get down in there like so and kind of push, push. Try to get up in there, and once I'm in here, that ah, <laughs> words. Once I'm in here this far, I kind of <laughs> what is wrong? <laughs> Can't get it out today. But anyway, I kind of shimmy it around, 
to kind of loosen it up. And what you can also do, once you get the screwdriver in there, you can spray some penetrating oil in there to really get it, you know, loose. But I didn't have to go through all that. <laughs> I was tongue tied, jeez. <laughs> all right. So the next thing I'm gonna do is undo the oil feed line that appears to be a T30. Um, I'm gonna grab my T30. I don't think I previously grabbed that. That's the only tool I forgot. So I'm gonna grab that now. So this is a T45. Um, I would make sure I put a link in the description where you can get some nice uh, torque bit sockets from. This is a Craftsman. Um, I had a good kit, but I let my employees use them, and one of the employees that don't work here lost most of them. So that kit is. No and your tools are a mixture of different. Ones. Yeah, I do Snap have. Snap on a, Amazon, Harbor Freight. Yeah. Whatever works. So now that I've broken that a loose, uh, you're gonna want to be real careful because there is um, washers, not washers, but like little seals under here. So you wanna make sure you grab the bottom one and put that to the side. And this is it. And it's not recommended that you reuse these. Um, I think I have a kit of these somewhere laying around that I will be replacing. And it's another one under the boat. It's like wedged in there really good. It's, you can see the rubber that is. The seal was getting ready to start leaking. All right, so. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this band clamp from the down pipe. And it appears to be a 14 maybe. Let's see if I'm right. Sometimes I'm right at guessing this stuff and sometimes I'm wrong. But I'm gonna go with a 13 or 14. No, you gotta pick one. <laughs> oh, 13. All right, let's see if I'm right. Come on, come on. Yes. <laughs> Got it. Uh, write down in the comments and let me know if anybody else play that game. I always play that game with myself. I look at a, a, a fastener head and be like, mm, that's a, well, tens are easy to spot, but that's a 15, 14. So write down in the comments. Let me know who else does that. But that's the little game I play with myself when I'm working on cars. Now I'm gonna completely remove this so I can kind of spread it out the way. So that should be good. All right, oh, this light. Let's see if I can put it right here. That looks better, no? Fine. Okay. All right, so it's prior time again. Squeeze these together. This is one of the cooler lines. Okay, slide that down. Now I'm replacing this so I can afford to be a little rough on it. But um, like before, if I was trying to save it, I would take my flat blade screwdriver and kind of get to the top and pry down like so and kind of hook it with my finger. Oh, it's splatter coolant. Did I get the camera? No, it's fine. Okay. Uh, still got coolant in the system. I thought I drained everything. I'm gonna go grab my blanket again. Next thing I'm gonna do is start removing my manifold bolts. Now, these are one-time use bolts, so it's highly recommended that you replace these. Um, 
get them from the dealership. That's where I got mine from. You can get the studs and the bolts or just the bolts. See, the reason you may want to get the studs so you won't have to, some, sometimes they come out like this uh, with the stud and the bolt together. And you don't want to, some people don't want to fight holding this down with some pliers or whatever the case may be to try to remove it. You can just replace the whole thing. I'm not that expensive. No, they're not. So. And if you want to know the torque spec on these uh, bolts, They are 16 foot pounds. So as you saw, I couldn't get this one with my regular ratchet. And I'm about to show you another design feature, design feature of these bolts. What next? have a torque bit head on them. I don't know if you can see that, but I do believe it's the same size as the T45. So, yep, same size. So let's see if I can get it now. Yep, comes right off. Did y'all? <laughs> I'm not gonna. Well, I can go forward, but it'd probably be just easier just to take this off. Oh, where is my flat blade screwdriver? Why do I keep losing it? It fell on the floor. Right oh. oh, right in front of me. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. Always retrieve your fasteners. Don't leave them down there because you can bump into them and lose them. They can go somewhere important. Um, it'll probably be a good idea. While I'm, while I'm speaking of fasteners, I did disconnect my charge pipe earlier. So for you guys at home, stuff a rag or something down in here so you, nothing will drop down in there because this is eventually going to end up in the um if it do makes if it do it can be small enough to make it past the fine um passageways in the intercooler but just for precaution's sake stuff that hole or just leave it connected i'm gonna put something down in there just to please you guys normally i don't And I think the reason I don't, <laughs> sometimes I forget, but if it's a big rag like that, I don't see how you can forget because yeah, it's not gonna go back on there. So got that. Um, now after, I haven't got all the bolts out yet. Um, there's one right there left. And let me see, I got one, two, I think I just got two left, three. Got three left. So, I'm gonna grab this one if I can. Um, if I remember correctly, I do think I have to remove this, but I'm gonna try it without removing it first. Like I said, good people, I haven't did this job in a while. It's been a minute. 
I normally do head gaskets on these engines a lot, so you have to take off the turbo. Uh, don't fall. Come back. So, nope. So what I'm trying to do now is put the this down in the hole, but I keep failing at it, so I'm gonna switch tactics real quick. I'm gonna try to use my swivel um, extension, which is I think it's too long. That's not gonna work. Switch to a smaller one, but it's not a swivel extension, so it's not gonna work. <laughs> but you can kind of see this arm is in the way, so I may just take it off. It's no biggie. So you have this e-clip here. You have to be very careful with. Um, hope you've seen that technique I used to your take fingers, it off. Your hand, uh, your cold hand okay, so it was on there like so. Stuck my screwdriver right here. And what I like to do is kind of surround it or I kind of pry it out so I won't lose it. Very small. Now, I can take these tins off and move my wastegate. And again, good people, I normally have a fan in front of me keeping me cool but you know for video sake I don't have my fan just so you guys can hear and good get good audio so I'm being hot for you guys so hope you appreciate it <laughs> still can't find the hole <laughs> and I made it easier for myself Tired of playing with you now. Bam, got it. I had to kind of use my finger as a guide. Voila. The next one. And by me taking the waste gate off, I think it had to come off um, so I can get to this one right here. Because the wastegate was in the way. Now I can easily get to that one. That's what I like about working on cars. Sometimes it's obvious what has to come off anytime you're working on something. It just won't work any other way unless you tear up something. And we're not, we don't want to tear up anything. And of course, sometimes you can do little tricks and things to get things off, but on my channel, I try to show you guys the proper way. Um, my tin. So now to get the very last one off, I'm gonna use my tin with a regular ratchet. Well, it's not regular, it has a flex head at the end. And I'm probably gonna have to switch to a wrench because the problem I'm having, the ratchet is so big, every time I come out, it's getting caught up. Like right now, it's kind of stuck. I'm gonna have to use a wrench. Like I said, we're gonna get through this together. Well, I didn't say that, but we're you gonna- do. <laughs> Yeah, I know I'm gonna do. We're gonna struggle through this together. Come on out, baby. I know you can do it. My wrench done got stuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't use a wrench. Use a regular, uh, <laughs> use a regular ratchet. Uh, we just, see, we working through this together. We learn, we learning stuff together. And it's good that it's been a while. That way, you know, I can, do mistakes and 
you guys can see so you won't do them back at home. A little bit of finesse, got it right. All right, so I'm gonna grab a ratchet wrench. That one right there. Yeah, so hopefully I can get it with a ratchet wrench. Mm -hmm. And this is a ratchet wrench. Now, this is a straight one, meaning it's straight. Normally, I have one that curves. That would be more better for this application, the one that curves, but I got it with the straight one, no biggie. Now there's a drain tube and another cooling line on this turbo too. Um, I'll show you how to get to that in a bit after I finish fighting with this fastener. I thought it was free enough where I can turn it by hand. Ooh, I'm starting to cook now. <laughs> and the day for me is Friday, so I'm looking for a long, relaxing weekend. Uh, we've been quite busy this week here at the shop. So I'm a little wore out. Babe, how about you? You always worn out. You're nine months pregnant. I'm sleepy right now. I'm holding this camera. <laughs> Finally got you. Jeez. I do think that's the hardest fastener to get to. Let me gather my thoughts. Got that off. Sometime when I need to take a break, or sometime I like to assess the situation, I leave, grab me something to drink, and come back. <laughs> and drink. Um, no, nah, but for real though, good people. Um, sometimes the parts will help you. Um, let's see. No, I don't think the parts helped me this time. Yes, it did. So this is the, I don't know why it's wet. So this is the hose I'm replacing. Um, um, like I mentioned in the other video, the reason it didn't have this heat protecting blanket, uh, cause I pulled it off to see what was going on. During the diagnostic. Yeah, during the diagnostic process. But it fits on there uh, like so. And right here you have a screw, a bolt, that's kind of hold, help holding it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a E11, cause that's what it is, and undo the undo the oil feed to first because it's kind of in the way yeah i can sneak around it but why well, sneak around it i'm just gonna move it out the way um look at these seals um i have some more i'm gonna replace those with never reuse old seals sometimes with small fasteners like this i will kind of place them back in place that way you won't lose them all right and the bracket is right here. So once I take that loose, I should be able to get to it a little bit better. So I go to the other side. Yeah, the other side will be better. Mm -hmm. right. So now that I got that loose, good there. All right, now it's time to go on to the bottom. As you see, it's, it's almost off. I should have another cooler line on this and a oil drain uh, tube. I'm gonna show you how to get that off next. So I'm about to get ready and go back up with it. Next step, I'm gonna get ready to remove my catalytic converter. It just makes the, the taking the turbo off a lot easier. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, I'm using power tools on this video. And this is my little Milwaukee Fuel Stubby. I love this thing. It does a lot. Um, I'll put a link in the description for this as well. Barely high, highly recommended tool. And I think the manifolds are 
13s as well. I mean, the downpipe. Okay, let me see. Yep. extract it which mm, I probably make a separate video home because I'm gonna have to fix that uh, once I get the cat off I can fix it and I probably just replace the stud it was going good but sometimes hey that happens is it rusty yeah it's, it's a little rusty under here and that's the reason it snapped. Um, so those three are taken off. It's a little bracket right here. That was a 10. I took that one off. It's another one up there. I'm going to access it from the top. And once I remove the cat out the way, then I'll be able to get better get to the, uh, the oil cooler line that's at the bottom. And I'll be able to open up everything to easier, make it easier to get to the... Um, the oil drain too. All right, we're getting ready to come back down with it. Okay, there's another tin right here. Just move the inner core piping out the way. And a little bracket. Hopefully you can see that. I don't think you can very well. Shine a little light on it. No. Push a little light. I think I get the camera down there. Yeah, there's a bracket. So now, we'll move that. Maybe. Maybe I'm still thinking about the ratings. I'm terrible when it comes to ratings because to me, it's a five. To you guys, it may be a, a different rating. Write down in the comments and tell me what you guys think this job rated is rated at. I like on seven. a skill level. I don't know. I don't think it's that hard. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's Well, for me, it'd be a 10. <laughs> yeah, so you get what I'm saying, you know, for... Some people it may be different. So now I'm going to disconnect the oxygen sensor and this little clip works like this. You just pull out and it should slide out. Let me see. Pull that out and then it should just come right out. So that's the cat. I just dropped that down through the bottom, retrieve it. All right. So this is the stud that broke right here. It looked like I can just knock it through and put a bolt and um, screw in there. So that's that. All right. Now, it opens up everything. So now when I go under there, I can better see what's going on. And now this is, this really wanna come off now. I think it's like two other things holding it on. The drain and the other, um, let me go ahead and remove this. Uh, I really can't. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back up with it. Show you what we're gonna do on the next. All right, so, so we back down to the bottom. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this is my first time doing this job in a while. Um, so you kind of see me going back and forth. The proper way to do it, um, cause I always like teaching you guys the proper way. And sometimes I don't look up the instructions on purpose, like the procedure, just so we can learn together, in other words. So the proper thing to do is to focus from the bottom, I think first, um, Come down to the bottom, undo the catalytic converter, um, 
undo this bracket right here. Um, drain the coolant. Briefly go back up to the top. Undo the band clamp. Drop the drop down the catalytic converter after you don't remove this one last bracket up top because you can easily get to it up top and drop the cat then come back down to the bottom undo the two oil drain lines and the other cooler line which are 17 because now what i'm facing is um i think this is gonna move but we what we're gonna see let's 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 shoot for it um what i have here is an extension on a swivel uh, this one easy to get to so this is not gonna be a problem so I'll take that off and the reason I got a swivel because of this one back here it's in a weird location because of this bracket in the way yes I can just remove the bracket but sometimes the less stuff you remove the less stuff you got to put back together that's my theory Did you break it loose? Yep. Right. And you don't worry. Have to, you don't have to worry about this gasket slipping off and dropping because it's kind of clamped in on top. Um, once I get the turbo off, I will show you. So I'm gonna take my 17 and try to break this a loose. I have to. Oh, it came loose easy. Okay, so I was wrong. It didn't slide all over the place. So you should just be able to loosen up these lines and it should just slide right out. All right, so I got the line off. I didn't want to bore you because it's kind of a long screw. Uh, fastener and nut. <laughs> the screw on fitting was long, so I just sat there with my wrench and just kept turning, kept turning. And soon I let it came off, and as you can see, it's spewing coolant now. So I'm going to go back down with it, and now the turbo is actually ready to come off. Now it's time, finally time to remove the turbo. So I'm going to grab it with two hands and slowly... Pull it out. If I got everything disconnected, which I think I do, set it to the side like so. Um, it'd be a good idea. I didn't do it, but for you guys at home, it'd be a good idea to remove the dipstick because I could have easily bumped into it and broke it. But I've done this before, so it's no big deal for me. There's the other cooler line. I'm replacing this one as well. This is the one I was getting off and this is the drain turbo oil drain and like i said the gasket is kind of like um, it's got these little tabs that kind of keep it on but that's irre re irrelevant to what we're working on now uh, but i'm going to replace this one and this one so me like I said, at home, you guys may find an easier way to sneak them out, which you can. You probably can remove the um, catalytic converter and get up in there. But I, I just think it'll be a lot harder that way. And plus, I want to show you guys how to remove a turbo. Um, you may have a turbo that went out or whatever the case may be. Now you guys know how to do it. But I'm going to change out this line. So this is the boring part. <laughs> so this is it. And this was my, yes, yeah, it's like it want to slide off. <laughs> it was so old and that's crazy. So these are my parts.
Should have two of these. Yes. Now, looking at this, see, I originally thought this slid out, uh, but looking at the design of it, it's kind of locked in place. Once I slide this fitting um, down in here, like so, it's got this little ring on it that catches this. So once I put these fittings down in here and slide that down, it will lock in place. You can come with new gaskets. Go ahead and do it like this. That way I can just, yeah, I'll do that last. I probably should just do it one at a time, but I didn't. And if you want to, you guys at home, um, it'd probably be a good idea to like kind of grease this a little bit because sometimes when you go in dry um, with these rubber O-rings, you can mess them up. Now, tightening the, these down, I just give it like a good little arm hit, like not too much force, but mm, a good little force. Um, I'm not sure the torque specs on these. Um, these are not that serious, as long as they're nice and tight. Probably better if I get a 17 side. But yeah, good little arm tight on it would do just fine. All right, and this one go here, but I'm gonna get some grease to slide these on. So I got my grease here. What I was mentioning, well, I, didn't, I don't think I mentioned it yet. But. You did. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna lightly coat it in grease. That way you won't rip the seals when going in. It'll be nice and smooth. And it's supposed to lock in place, which it did. It's not going anywhere. And um, kind of lightly grease this one up. Um, I'm probably gonna put this one on when I kind of put the turbo in place. That'll be easier for me. Guys, I was going to do a second video, but the removal process, I think if you can remove it, you can put it back together. Um, the uh, manifold gasket, where well, the manifold bolts are 16 foot pounds, like I mentioned earlier. Um, the only reason I don't think I'm gonna do a second video because for once my phone is raggedy and <laughs> I can only charge it wireless i can't plug it in so my phone is going dead which i film my videos on not only that we gotta not get only, this car out yeah. of here yeah not only that i gotta get this car back to its customers so i need to zip through putting this car back together and i i like to talk while i work and you know tell you guys tips and tricks but i won't have time for that unfortunately um guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you like it please hit that like button subscribe i have plenty more to come um i always like reading you guys comments so you know hit me up in the comment even if it's not about this job i will try to help you guys whatever car you're working on guys and gals I, women follow me too um alice the car doctor out see you guys on the next video